in this video, we are going to open up shop. Hello everyone, my name is Inhibit, and I hope that you are all having a great day today. Welcome to episode 6 on the Vanilla Ice Cream SMP server. Last episode, we made these four villager trading halls that you guys can see right now in front of your eyes. And in between episodes, I made this pathway right here. It's a pretty simple pathway design, but I think that it really ties in all of the builds together. And I think that this will continue on throughout the whole industrial district. Now you may have also noticed down in my hotbar right there that I have 110 levels and that is because we have some new villagers and I have been grinding a lot of trades. If we take a look into this chest right here, as you can see we have a full double chest of golden carrots and in this chest right here we have a full chest of cooked pork chops which are probably the best food source in the game and not only that we also have nine sets of diamond armor and tons upon tons of enchanted books. That's right, in this episode, we are opening up a shop. However, it will be a pretty weird one. More on that later. For now, I'm going to need to perfectly enchant the sets of diamond armor using all of the books that we have right here. However, to do that, we're going to need to transport a lot of items, and as you can see right here, we don't really have a lot of shulker boxes. So I think that we should start this episode off by doing a bit of end raiding. Alrighty then, end rating is now done and here are the spoils of our journey. As you can see here, we have just a lot of diamond gear. Not that I'm in any shortage of that, however, we did find two armor pieces right here that are just very, very cursed. As you can see, it has both of the curses on it and I'm not really quite sure how that works. Anyways, onto this box right here, we have four dragon heads. For elytras, a lot of valuable stuff as you can see here, and most importantly, a lot of sugar shells. We almost got one and a half stacks of sugar shells, so this should last me a good while. Some of you may be wondering about the diamond gear right here in my inventory, but it's just my end rating gear and all of my main gear is simply stored in this shulker box right here inside of my ender chest. Anyways, now that we have all the shulker shells, I'm going to be crafting up some boxes and I'm going to be transporting all of these books right here over to our enderman farm. Right then, we are now at the server's enderman farm right here made by Justin and now we are gonna go do some enchanting. And we are now back from doing some enchanting and as you can see here we have all of the armor pieces enchanted, we also have some boots right here, and we also enchanted the four elytras that we got from end reading earlier. In the sugar box right here we also have some weapons, as you can see right here we have some hose with silk touch and fortune 3 and we also have all the other tools both in silk touch and fortune 3. Now I'd like to say that these are perfectly enchanted however they really aren't as you can see here if we take the chest plate for an example it doesn't have thorns 3 which would technically make it the perfect enchants however some people do not like thorns 3 because well it breaks their armor a little too quickly and some people like it because well they can hurt enemies that hurt them. So, in order to solve that, I have some Thorns 3 books right here. And in my shop, I'm going to offer them for free once you purchase an armor piece. Just to try and satisfy everyone's needs. And in here, we also have some optional enchants for the bow and the sword. We have Knockback 2 and Punch 2. And over here, we have some Flame and Fire Aspect 2 books. Alright, now that we have the main bulk of our products right here, I'm going to put everything else that I plan to sell into some shulker boxes. And let's go on over to where I actually plan to build this shop. Alright, I have moved all of our products to this valley right here, which is where we are going to be putting our shop. And we are fairly close to Project Revillage right there because, well, it is our community area. But we are far enough away because I want to build quite a bit more things around this shop. Now that I have told you that I'm going to be building some other stuff around the shop, I think that this is a perfect time for me to tell you about why the shop is going to be a bit of a weird one. 
You see, on this server, there are a couple of different shops. Let's take Mendel's Gunpowder Shop for example. As you can see here, it uses diamonds for currency. Now, this won't be the case in my shop because at my shop, I want to use these as my currency. Now, obviously, I didn't mean that we're going to be using Sunflower as our currency, but I don't know if you guys can see this, but the Sunflower item texture kind of looks a little bit like a coin. So, because the Sunflower items kind of look a little bit like coins, I want to make my own currency that I will be calling Inhibit Tokens. See what I did there? Cringy names aside, let me explain to you how the other members of the SMP can get their hands on some Inhibit Tokens and how they can use Inhibit Tokens inside of my shop. Alright, so basically the other members on the server will need to do some mini games wherein they can win a certain amount of Inhibit Tokens and then they can go into my shop and exchange the Inhibit Tokens for some goods. Now, this little parkour course here that I made is just a proof of concept. Now, there will be a parkour course for you to get inhibit tokens. However, there will be other mini games, and all of them will be inside of this valley right here. For now though, I think that we should figure out how I'm going to be getting my hands on a lot of inhibit tokens that I can distribute to the other members on the server. Since we're going to be using sunflowers for our tokens, then we can just simply buy some bones from Justin, turn that into bone meal, and then we can bone meal some sunflower. Now, there is a little bit of a problem. As you can see, this one diamond right here only got me one and a half stacks of bone meal, and that is a pretty good amount, and that will also turn into one and a half stacks of inhibit tokens. However, if I want tons upon tons of this stuff, then I'm going to need to buy a lot of Justin's bones, and that will make me go broke. To fix that problem, I'm going to be making a quick and easy skeleton farm right here, and then I'll just meet you guys once I have a ton of inhibit tokens. Right, so as I have told everyone, I have farmed up some bone meal, farmed up some sunflowers, and renamed all of them to be inhibit tokens, and now we have... 12 sugar boxes of them. If anyone's curious, renaming the sunflowers took 324 levels. Anyways, now that we have our custom currency right there, I think that we should now use my hasty beacon and my trusty pickaxe to drill a hole into this mountain and make our shop. Hello there, my name is Business Inhibit, and I'd like to talk to you guys about my new shop. Anyways, the shop is now all built up, and as you can see here, I have decided to call it Inhibit's Token Trader because you use Inhibit tokens to trade for goods. Over at the entrance of the shop, we have two lecterns right here. We have the Product Category List, and we have the Token Guide and Minigame List. If you guys want to read these books right here, then you can just pause the video, and pretty much that one describes all of the products and its categories and this one kind of just explains to the server members what are tokens and how you get tokens and it will also have the list of mini games on to the actual shop itself as you can see here the structure is pretty much just a long hallway with rooms branching out of it and over here to the first room we have some food and pretty much here you can buy some food as you can see the pricing here is 16 inhibit tokens for 64 golden carrots and over here, it's also 16 inhibit tokens for 64 cooked pork chop. If you guys didn't know, these are pretty much the best food source in the game. We have the best food saturation right here, and we have the best food for hunger. And just across our food room right here, we have the minerals room. I didn't really know what to call this, but this is pretty much what you would see in your valuable box. As you can see here, I have some items here labeled as soon because, well, I don't have farms or abundant amount of these things just yet. However, we do have the iron box right here, 16 inhibit tokens for a stack of iron ingots, and the emerald box right here, 16 inhibit tokens for 32 emeralds. And then over here, we have the next set of rooms. We have the tools, weapons, and armor room. Obviously, pretty self-explanatory. You can get tools and weapons. So right here, 64 inhibit tokens for one tool. It may sound overpriced, but you'll see that it isn't really once we start making some minigames. Anyways, you can get them in Fortune 3 or in Silk Touch variants. And then over here, we have some weapons. We have the different kinds of swords, and we are offering the modification books right here for free. We also have some mending bows, some infinity bows, and again, the modification books right here for free. Over here, we also have some armor, 
pretty much the same. You have the maximum armor rate here except for Thorns and Soul Speed 3 just because I don't really have a bartering farm. And we are offering right here some Thorns books for free. All of the tools, weapons, and armor pieces are all for 60 for one piece. And then over here we have the end stuff. I don't really know what to call this. Anyways, we are selling some Shulker Shells. So you get 64 inhibit tokens for two shulker shells that's a pretty good deal in my opinion because shulker shells are pretty useful however they are pretty hard to come by because we don't have a shulker form yet and those are also pretty pretty complicated to set up anyways over here we have some elytras and it's nine stacks of inhibit tokens for one elytra i don't really expect anyone to buy the elytra but just in case you lose yours then this is probably the best way to get it all right that's pretty much it for the shop as you can see here we have plenty of room for expansion and yeah anyways we are now back to regular old inhibit because now we are going to move on to making some mini games okay so right now pretty much what i'm trying to do is i'm just trying to plan where the first couple mini games in this place will go and this looks just about right all right let's get on to making some mini games all right so i have now cleared out some space for um one of the three mini games that we're going to be playing today actually all of these boxes right here will be parkour however this one's going to be the easy parkour that one's going to be the normal parkour and that one's going to be the hard parkour and obviously as the difficulty goes up the more inhibit tokens you will get for completing that course and pretty much the idea is you know pretty simple just um doing some parkour uh jumping on some pillars that's kind of how parkour usually works is you kind of just you know jump across some pillars that's pretty much what parkour is and then you get to the very end you click a button and then you get inhibit tokens all right so this right here is pretty much the end of our easy parkour and behind me is the button that needs to do two things so pretty much when i click this button right here it obviously needs to give me my inhibit token that will probably come out from somewhere in the ceiling and another thing that it needs to do is to pull out the floor from below me so that i drop down into here so that i need to redo the whole parkour for more inhibit tokens now to do that it should be pretty simple and even someone like me can probably do the redstone on it we just take a redstone output from the button down there and then we place a dropper right here for our inhibit tokens as you can see here let's put this one in and now what should happen when I press this is we get an inhibit token. Now for the other action that that button needs to do, all we need to do is just place down some sticky pistons right here. And then we're going to place some blocks right here, remove this block, and then we are going to power these pistons. And then we are again going to take an output. A redstone output from the button right there the the redstone is going to be a bit jank but that's fine so we're gonna make it go down to here and that should make it so that our floor here I actually load this up our floor here should drop down and then we get our um, inhibit token somewhere right here that pretty much does it for our inhibit token dispensing system and this sort of system will be present in the two other difficulties of parkour that we will have however they will probably have more droppers because i want to give them more inhibit tokens for the higher difficulties that they complete anyways now the next step is to make this place look a lot better Okay, then this place is now looking a lot better than what you guys last saw. So pretty much we are still using the white colors. However, we are using a complementary color and I went for green as green is kind of the color that symbolizes energy. And I just thought that that would be perfect for a parkour course. Anyways, this place is now ready. I am getting dropped down by the pistons and I am also getting dispensed my inhibit tokens. Over here, we have a bit of a spectator area, so if I want to watch the other members of the SMP run this course, then I can definitely do that from this place. And over here, we are going to be having a rule book. However, I'm going to write that book 
a little bit later because for now I am going to need to make two more parkour courses of different difficulties. Right, and we are now back and as you can see here we have one, two, and three parkour courses so let me run you guys through it. We are now at the easy parkour course right here and I've also decided on a name for all of our parkour courses which will be Jumpy Tokens. I won't be reading the book for you guys but anyways the first page is just some general information so that everyone has an idea on how much tokens they can get for a set amount of time and then the second page is pretty much just the rules so if you guys want to read them then you can pause the video and now we can run this course so like i said this is the easy course so you know normally it would be pretty easy and if i click that button i get dropped down and i get my inhibit token over on to the second course which is our normal course here is the book yet again you guys can pause the video if you guys want to read these the rules are pretty much the same for all of these three courses so let us now run this course now this one is the normal difficulty so it's quite a bit harder if i'm being honest with you however we do get two tokens once we finish it so i guess that it is pretty worth it as you can see there from the ceiling we get two inhibit tokens we got that one from the easy course and we got two from this normal course Finally, we are at the final course of Jumpy Tokens, which is also the hardest. Here is the book yet again, and yeah, now let's just run this course, uh, which is a pretty hard course. I've actually failed this one a lot, as you can see there. Alright, take two. Let's do some head hitters, and then do some pain jumps, and then do this weird head hitter here with a stare, and click the button and get ourselves four inhibit tokens so this one's from the easy one this one is from the normal one and this one is from this one which is the hardest one all right then those are all of the mini games that i will be making for this video however before we end the episode i am going to be cleaning this place up a bit just so that you know it looks a bit more pleasing to the eye and i also want to build a very big sign right there to hopefully call the attention of the other server members Hello there, Business Inhibit is back because I would now like to officially open Minigame Valley. That's right, Minigame Valley is now open for business and as you can see here, I have definitely cleaned up and I have also made this path that leads us to our shop and also the first three minigames to go with it. Alright then, that is all that I have planned for this video. As usual, it took me a good while. To make anyways like i said in the beginning of the video i hope that all of you are having a great day today and i hope that this video made it a better one see ya